Facebook? Facebook. It's YouTube. YouTube Live. YouTube Live. Oh. We're back. We're back after getting shut down the last time. And we're going to try to... We're going to try to be good boys today. Don't touch my gun. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. They'll shut you down. But uh, welcome to YouTube Live on the Suits channel. Robbie Wheaton from Wheaton Arms and uh, WheatonArms.com. They do a lot of Glock aftermarket parts and accessories, and he does a lot of custom work. So check out WheatonArms.com. And uh, we really appreciate him. Being a gunsmith for over 20 years, so it's really great to have him with us. And when we start taking questions, which we will do in a few minutes, <clears throat> um, it's just great to have Robbie here to answer a lot of things because he's seen it pretty much all. Uh, but any, And also, Sarah Max over on the computer monitoring all the comments and questions. And so uh, we're in for a big day today and uh, got a lot of cool things to talk about. Uh, one of the first things, though, I do want to talk about is the MTM, which, I mean, you guys, if you've been dealing with guns at all, you know about MTM case guard. Uh, I remember when I used to do the reloading, yep. and I still have a bunch of those oh, yes. boxes, and, and they've been in business for over 40 years. Well, there's something new they've come out with, and so they wanted me to bring it to you guys, and so they're sponsoring today's episode, and uh, this is actually pretty cool. Uh, they're doing these new labels. And uh, these are polymer coated. They're weather resistant. They're just just incredible stickers. And you can put them on your ammo cans if you have ammo. <laughs> but here well, you can still put them on the empty can. You can put this on the empty can. Uh, but, you know, guys, I know right now ammo is at a premium, but uh, this is just really cool. And these are the little mini crates. In fact, I'm gonna pull this over. We've been using these at the range for a while, oh, actually, yeah. at least for a year or so. And uh, these are great little ammo crates, but uh, you can just put your labels, whatever you have, different ones. Now, they started this out originally just with your basic calibers, 945, 12 gauge, that kind of stuff. They moved it up because they had so many people requesting it that they now have 41 different labels. I mean, if you've got the caliber, they've got it. I mean, even 22 short. I mean, they've got everything. 350 Legend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's 45 Long Colt, 17 SMW or S WSM. WSM. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just there's just a ton of these different things, and it comes like eight in a pack. And um, so, you know, we've been just playing around with them here. If you have your metal ammo tins, oh god, this thing's pulling nine millimeter. And uh, you know, it just goes right on. For years, I've been taking masking tape, mm -hmm. putting them on there and labeling it. And then it curls up and comes off and it tears. And so uh, this is just a great way to be able to, thank you, Robbie. Mm -hmm. A great way to be able to label your ammo and keep yourself organized. And um, so we're going to just show you how it works. It's just pretty cool, actually. Ah. So here we go. We've got just a 10. This is a bunch of 7.62 by 3.9. And uh, this is a little bit larger crate. They do a bunch of different type crates on top of that. And they're sealed. These are really great. Uh, they're not quite as heavy as some of the metal tins, unless you fill it up with ammo. And you can just you can stick it here. You can put it here, wherever you want to. And of course, there's eight in a pack, so you can put them on top if you want. You can put them at the front. But uh, just really high quality. In fact, let me get the. Oh, here's one with the magazines. So if you have magazines in something, you know you can just tap that on. I think these are like $4.99 and it's the ammo storage.com is how they do their retail. The great thing about these are is they do free shipping if you order it from there. And so I uh, just wanted to kind of talk about these for a few minutes because these are just really cool. And uh, we've had a lot of fun. It was like yep. show craft time up here, Robbie. <laughs> well, you know, I got, I got here a little bit early today, so it gave us a, a good chance to kind of catch up from over the weekend and then work on some of this stuff and get these labels on some of the cans before uh, before the show started today. So. Yeah. You know, and one thing it was funny because I have 380 and I had nine millimeter. And honestly, I was looking at it at first. I thought it was 40. And this is a great way to be able to, because nine and 40 and nine millimeter, if you lay it out there, you have to stop and kind of look at it. Mm -hmm. And so that's a great way also to keep track of your ammo. Uh, so I just think it's a great thing. But again, it's uh, ammo storage. Uh, it is ammo storage. I want to make sure because I always go to, yeah, no, ammo boxes, ammo boxes.com, ammo boxes.com, free shipping. They have all the labels there. Uh, so, you know, if you have some unusual calibers, great way to get into it. Now, leading into that, uh, this is one thing that's, of course, we all know about the ammo shortage. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, nine millimeter and five, five, six, 
if you can find it, which it's very difficult to find, it is extremely expensive. Uh, and so I was in Palmetto State Armory the other day. We have a retail store here. And I was finding 40 caliber. <clears throat> I found 308, 6.5 Creedmoor, mm -hmm. 32 ACP, 45 Colt. I mean, some of these calibers that are they're popular, yep. but they're not necessarily well, now 308 is definitely in the in the self-defense realm. But these are calibers that are actually were available right there at the store. There was and the prices are probably about what they normally are. Th even they were, yeah, a little higher, but yeah. not a lot. Yeah. And they're having to pay a little more. I mm -hmm. think. But um, so one thing, guys, is in guns, we're finding guns. Yeah. I mean, we may not find the exact one that you're looking for right now. Uh, it's a little more difficult to find, but we, the guns are still out there. And so, uh, you know, one of the things that really struck me when all this first started happening with the ammo shortage is I remember this one couple and they were new to guns and the guy was talking to them and they had decided on a nine millimeter pistol. I mean, they were, they were decided and they said, this is the one we want. The guy went, well, I'm going to tell you, he goes, there's no ammo for it. I don't know when we're going to get it. And uh, the, the couple just kind of stood there, you know, kind of like a yeah. deer in headlights. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, Hey, we've got another pistol over here. They actually had 380 at the time which that's actually gotten more scarce than even nine. And so they ended up getting the 380 and had, were able to get a couple of boxes of ammo with it. So sometimes guys, especially if you have a nine millimeter pistol and you have a box or two and that's it, you might want to consider going into another direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, something that's a little more readily available, like you were saying, 40 caliber, um, even like maybe some of the Makarov stuff, there, there's a lot of your surplus ammo that's that's sometimes still available even when your commercial stuff dries up that's true i mean 7.62 <clears throat> .6 by 39 yep you have an ar-15 but you don't have any 5.56 or 223 mm -hmm. just consider i mean there's options out there yep. so just kind of consider it if you really don't have uh you know the ammo you need for your go-to firearm you need to think about it because i mean really it's you know you just need to be prepared you got to be able to be prepared for your to protect your family and to protect yourself and, um, you know, you can get frustrated trying to find ammo. But, of course, I always talk about this, guys, is go to ammoseek.com. It's listing all these different companies that are carrying the ammo, and it starts with the price all the way down. And so that, to me, is a great way to do it. But um, this is the bottom line, guys. When this is over, if, <laughs> if and when, yeah. uh, the ammo prices start to come. And honestly, uh, it's according to what happens in, in, in the election. But uh, if the election goes toward, you know, one side, we, we may never see ammo again. Yeah. Uh, if it goes to the other side, hopefully by summertime or e even spring, possibly, hopefully we're going to start seeing some things come back. Please, if you have a go-to firearm, stock up on ammo. Mm -hmm. This is the fifth or sixth time this has happened. Yep. Yeah. And going um, all the way back to 2008. Yeah. yeah. And not, oh, count, not counting 1994 yeah. when, when Clinton was elected. But for, for a lot of gun owners, um, 2008 was the first time that they ever really saw this massive shortage right. in firearms and ammunition. Yeah. I'll tell you, I remember when, when they had that initial assault weapons ban mm -hmm. and it was a panic. Yep. And I remember going in and this is when I still actually shopped at Walmart and I would go in there. Every time I'd go in, I would look for ammo. Once in a while, I could get some. But that is the, when I made the decision that I would always have a 40 caliber handgun because they had 40 caliber. Yep. They never, they nine was gone. And so I just would go in and I'd pick up a box of 40 and I'd pick up a box of 40. Well, like with me, that was when I started reloading. Right. Because you could, you could get reloading components still very cheaply. It didn't back then. I don't. I guess reloading wasn't nearly as popular as it is now. Right. And uh, you could still get the components really cheap. Um, although you know your reloading presses, everything that you needed to load your ammunition, you could get it really cheap, and uh, you could save quite a bit of money. I remember powder was kind of a problem. Yeah. Uh, at that time, I mean, you could get it, but yep. you, you couldn't get necessarily what you were looking for right. all the time. But the big problem right now is pistol primers mm -hmm. and, and and small rifle primers, That's but right. especially the, the two small pistol and small rifle. Mm -hmm. They are almost non-existent. Yep. So, you know, it's one of those things where guys is, yeah, we're in the middle of it now. And what we didn't do in the past is what we didn't do. But for now, I mean, think about some options. Again, if you're desperate, because, you know, I talked about this the other week. We had people coming in to this. I was in my local gun shop and people, I mean, we probably had 
12 people come in just boom, boom, boom and say, you have ammo. And this one girl, I'll never forget it. She just said, she goes, do you have any ammo for nine millimeter? And he said, you know, we don't, we've hopefully got some coming in in the next couple of days. And she said, I have a new gun and I have no ammo for it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, if it's that kind of case, guys, again, if you can afford it, you need to think outside the box. And so um, that's one of the big things that, you know, we just want to talk about today and two outside the box. But, you know, uh, being able to store that ammo and keep it fresh, because, you know, if you're going to stock up on some ammo, you need to keep it in a cool, dry place. That's right. And ammo cans are some of the best. Mm -hmm. In fact, years ago when I was doing a lot of reloading, yep. I would <clears> store all my ammo in military surplus cans. And that's 30 years ago. A lot of that. I can take that ammo out now and shoot it. I still store ammo in, uh, in the military cans, generally either 30 caliber or 50 caliber ammo cans and just pack them full. Right. Um, because it's a, it's a great way to uh, store your ammo for long term. It is. Uh, it, the killer of ammunition is moisture. Right. You know, that's, that's what ruins so much ammunition. You know, and we get, we get questions all the time from people. Well, I've got this ammo that's like five years old or 10 years old. Is it still good for me to use? <laughs> and the, the answer is always, as long as it's never got moisture on it, the answer is always yes. You know, you look back, a lot of your surplus ammo that's brought into the country, even today, is World War One and World War Two surplus ammo. Right. So you're talking about ammunition that's 100 years old. Right. That's being brought into the country and still sold as viable usable ammunition now a lot of it is corrosive but it's still very good ammunition and very good quality ammunition um, just because it was made a hundred years ago means absolutely nothing as long as it was stored properly and kept dry that ammunition is still as good today as it was the day it was made right and that's one thing about your ammo tins uh, or ammo mm. cans they have mm. a silicone seal around it mm -hmm. also these mtm cans yep and uh I don't typically, I do store ammo in them. In fact, this ammo that's in here has been in here for a little while. But what we do is we take this to the range. And what's really cool is I can do, they're smaller, so I can load specific calibers. That's right. And then it has this caddy. I mean, these things are just great. I mean, they're great. And uh, I've always been a big fan. And uh, we have, in fact, there's a number of different ones. So again, you can go to, to ammoboxes.com and you can find all this as well. Yeah, and the link is in the description. So make sure you click on it. Okay, we're going to go to some questions, uh, and hopefully we'll have some answers or if you have some comments, and uh, we'll kind of start rocking through it. Um, oh, one thing I do want to mention just on, on the fly is uh, Olight is having a sale, which is typical, and it's on the 15th. I think it's the 15th and 16th, but this specific sale is about their pink I3, it's the I1R EOS in limited edition pink. All the proceeds, and I'm talking about every dime, including their profit, is going to cancer uh, research for breast cancer. That's cool. Yeah. So uh, this is really cool. In fact, they told me they said, just don't you don't you can make a video if you want or you don't, but just promote it wherever. And uh, they have raised, they have done this a number of times. But uh, this is a really cool light. It is rechargeable. It's 150 lumens. Uh, I would pull it out, but I'm going to give this away on Patreon. We like to do that a lot. Uh, but it's just this light right here that I have on my keychain, And I mean, it has low and boom, and it is a uh, rechargeable. So really cool light, but really cool for Olight to do that. They Absolutely. have a big heart, guys. I don't care what you say about them. Um, <clears throat> they're just great. So I just want to throw that out. And uh, you can just go to the Olight World website, or I think it's Olight Store, Olight Store website, mm -hmm. and you can get the details. And it's a 25% off, and then they're going to give the proceeds for uh, breast cancer. Yes, ma'am. Um, Neil J. Boyce uh, says, I'm moving to the USA from the UK early next year. I've been looking at the 38 Super 1911. It seems to be a caliber that will be available easier than most. Uh, well, yes and no. Uh, in fact, it's funny. I am working on a Colt 38 Super review right now. And um, there is ammo. Well, I haven't really looked to see if there's ammo available at this point. Yeah. 38 Super and 38 Super Comp are a caliber that's very popular with uh, USPSA and, and IPSC shooters. Uh, so a lot of times those guys will will scoop up that ammo, especially if it's uh, commercially loaded stuff that's whether a minor power factor or major power factor ammunition, they'll pick that ammo up and uh, and use it for competition. But yes, it is. That is one that is probably readily available yeah, right now. I think so. In fact, I bought yeah. some Fiocchi 38 Super for mm -hmm. this review. 
and uh, and I got it at Palmetto State Armory. It was in their uh, clearance bin. Right. Yep. So you know that's there's not a lot of people looking for it. It's just that the ones that are, are buying it, but mm -hmm. and it's a little bit different. But hey, it could be. You know, uh, I haven't really looked. Uh, if you can get on moseek.com and you can look it up and it'll show you what's available. That's so that right. may and be prices. a good barometer. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Voltaire E30 asks, would you build a 300 blackout right now? Yes. Uh, now again, See, ammo, I, would, I would go the exact opposite way. I would, I would have to say no just because of ammunition availability is 300 blackout though. Is it is hard to get as five, five, six at this point. Or I think so. Yeah. I would <clears> check <throat> the ammo availability. If you have ammo, I would yep. definitely do it. Right. Absolutely. Uh, now for me, and, and I'll tell you, because I have a really good friend and I've always thought this, I have a good friend that bought, he did his first build, his first AR, it was 300 blackout. And this is before the shortage. A lot of times he had trouble finding ammunition mm -hmm. uh, because it's out there, but it's it's not as popular as the 5.56 or 2.23. Yep. So if I had one AR, it would definitely be 5.56. Uh, five, 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 it would definitely be 5.56. Five, five, uh, but I do love the 300 blackout caliber oh, yeah. and we're Absolutely. fans and I have them. But um, and I do have ammo that I had bought purchased before. So um, that is going to be your your key. Thing. As far as uh, having a 300 blackout, they're great, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of <clears throat> a lot of advantages to having it. But uh, as far really, I think the biggest key there is just your ammo. Uh, Kier Michael Jacobson asks, "Why did you stop reloading?" Greetings from Norway. Oh well, thanks for watching and thanks for seeing us across <laughs> the pond. Um, well, I love reloading. In fact, it is one thing that is just pleasurable. Now, yep. Rob, Robbie still reloads full on, but oh, he yeah. does a lot of competitive <clears throat> shooting. When I was doing competitive shooting, it was the only way that I could shoot regularly mm -hmm. because ammo, I just couldn't afford the ammo at the time. Uh, for now, what happened was is, and I've still got my presses, and I even pulled out one a while back, a couple of years ago, and I was going to start reloading again because I really enjoy it. But I'm sponsored, my ammo sponsored. And so it makes it really hard to get motivated, <laughs> just to be honest. And really, I was I kind of set my presses up to do something. And yeah. then YouTube cut out any kind of reloading videos. I mean, mm -hmm. there's still some out there, but they really have hammered those videos. So uh, for me, that's just what I do. And so that's the reason. But honestly, I love reloading. Yeah. And we reload multiple cali calibers every week. Uh, whether it's 9 millimeter, 40 caliber, 45, 5.56, 308, 65 Creedmoor. And some of my magnum calibers, we load we load different ammo every week, right? Um, just for for personal consumption, right? And, and there's something about reloading that's just satisfying. Yeah. Uh, now, if you are wanting to reload or you're planning to reload, you should have primers and powder put aside. That is going to be your two biggest things, especially in shortage times. Mm -hmm. uh, Damian Grajeda asks, I have some steel case Tula ammo, seven point six two by three nine, with some rust on it. Is it still okay to shoot? As long as it, as long as the cam, the uh, it's not the the case integrity is not compromised. Right. right. Uh, I have I've had <laughs> some. Um, I found some a while back in a bag and it yeah. had a little bit of rust on it. I cleaned it up just to make sure it was fine. I mean, you don't want any holes in it. Right. It, it kind of depends. You know, it's one of those things that's really a judgment call. You know, as far as as far as how much damage the rust has done to the steel. Um, if it's compromised, looks like it's pitted it and compromised the integrity of it, I'd probably throw it away. If it's something that's like surface rust that you can just wipe off and clean up, it should be okay. Yeah, because you don't want a case rupture. No, 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 for sure. Um, Hanson Bauer asks, hi, Such, what is the best overall Olight? Also, any 40% off sales coming up? Uh, there is a sale coming up at the end of the month. There's a sale coming up at the end of the month. It will be a, a big flash sale. They're introducing something that they never introduced. They just introduced that bike light, which was really, it yeah. really kind of, I was kind of shocked with that one. This is one to me that's even, it's really awesome. And um, in fact, I'm really loving it. I can't say anything about it. Is it a flashlight? <laughs> no, it's not actually, but it is, just, it's a light, but I can't talk about it. Um, yes, but I, and they have some other things coming out and, I'll tell you this little, uh, this is the warrior mini and, uh, it's just awesome. I love the warrior series. They have mm -hmm. the big warrior pro, which is like a thousand meter throw. And then they have this, the warrior X pro, which is fantastic light. We use that for the dogs. I mean, whenever we're out with the dogs, that's the light I carry. 
Uh, but uh, I'm really digging this size flashlight for EDC. For years, I've carried the little small S Mini mm -hmm. and S One baton. But what I love about this is you don't even, you can't really even tell the difference, except that you have a little bit hanging out here as yeah. a self defense option. So it's just a little bit of a force multiplier. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, but Olight guys, and it's just like this. In fact, I think this is the one that I just beat to death. I mean, we beat it. We threw it up thirty feet. It's it's impact resistant to one and a half meters. That's bull crap. It's a, it's impact resistant <laughs> to a heck of a lot more. You know, it's beating it on a post. You run it with a Hummer. We do our normal things to it. These lights are great. And, um, and two, you know, they're, but I'll tell you, you know, when you get on their website, a lot of times they crash because they sell so many lights. So uh, I'm a big fan. And I think light is your number one security tool. So, um, you know, yeah, any, any of the O lights that fit what you want to do, you can find it. Uh, Evan Davidson asks, what do you think about stacking up on steel cased ammo if it, that is all you could find? Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. I mean, <clears throat> you know, especially if you don't have any ammo. And, and typically it's a little bit cheaper. It is. Yep. Even like uh, 762 and 556, I've seen it as low as $400 a thousand recently. You know, what's funny is a lot of people don't know this, but nothing fancy years ago, uh, you know, we went out, went out there for an all-star shoot. And uh, I was surprised that he used almost exclusively steel cased ammo. Mm -hmm. And he said he's never had any problems with it. Uh, but the reason why is because he didn't have anybody sponsoring his ammo at that time. And he said, I'm buying it. I'm having to buy it all. And, um, you know, that was one thing when I first started, I started going through all my ammo so fast. Yeah. I was so glad when HPR called me and they said, Hey, can we sponsor, give you some ammo? I'm like, please. But, um, <laughs> And that's what we should be feeling right now. Yep. Uh, if you don't have ammo, I would hands down buy some steel cased ammo. No problem. Um, I would I would definitely do that. Now, one thing you want to be careful of is lacquered. Mm -hmm. You want to be careful with the lacquered steel case ammo because it can jam up into your, your chamber. OK. Uh, Seamus RBNW says, what is an affordable option for an AR weapon light? Mine took a dump on me. Um. Well, it's according to, you know, now it, Surefire is great, but they're expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very expensive, but I, I, I really like Surefire. Uh, I'm going to tell you, the Olight Odin is actually higher lumens, much higher lumens. It's got a better throw. It's got great mounting options. It even is scout mount compatible. Mm -hmm. And it comes with the tail switch <clears throat> and the mount. And it's like $159 yeah. or $170. And when they have them on sale, or even if they don't, it's well, it's it's half the price of your surefire. And so that to me is one of the best on the market uh, for an AR weapons light. And it is it's long, but it has a massive throw. Yep. And uh, the lumens are just, I think it's 1500 lumens. It's just fantastic. And it comes in a couple of different colors. So yeah, it's a tremendous light for the money. Yeah. And now, when you even doing side by side comparisons with a bunch of other lights that are out there, it just, pardon the pun, but it, it outshines everything. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they do have their Valkyrie, which uh, is still, it's like a 1200 lumen light. Mm -hmm. And it's more for, you can put it on your pistol, but it'll go on the AR as well. Yep. And it doesn't have quite the throw as the Odin, but it's a lot smaller. So, but even still for like, you know, CQB stuff or, you know, around your house, a hundred yards or so, it's a great light for that. Now, also you might want to check out Crimson Trace. Uh, they have some pretty cool weapons lights. Mm -hmm. They're not, they don't have the lumens that Olight has. Uh, and I think Olight really has a little bit of an advantage, but the price, I believe on the, the, the Crimson Trace lights are really reasonable and they have some cool mounting options. In yep. fact, when you get the light, it'll go with key mod and m lock they mm -hmm. have either one you can do or you can go with a standard rail mount so that that's if you're looking for a reasonable light but be careful when you're buying your lights don't buy no name light brands because they won't hold up they just will not hold up uh, we did a 3,000 round torture test on the odin 3,000 rounds and beat the crap out of it and that thing just went like yep. gangbusters in fact, Robbie was with us. We were just shooting. We, in fact, our rifles. I think we about wasted our rifle before we, we got the light we out. We went through a lot of water that day, just keeping the barrel <laughs> yes, together, keeping it cool, so we could keep shooting. Uh, Richard Oliver asks, "What is the best flashlight laser combo for the Beretta APX Centurion?" 
uh, the uh, Olight. <laughs> I keep saying it. I just do a lot with Olight. I, I really love their lights. And I have choices. But they're so I, bright. It's hard to be. Old, I have flashlight companies just coming yep. all at me all the time, all the time. And I do. I test them. I just tested the Phoenix. That's a great. Okay, now I'm going to get off the subject. The Olight Valkyrie Mini. Valkyrie Mini. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's not the Valkyrie. It's the Baldor Mini. The, the Olight Baldor Mini, it is a small light. It's fully adjustable base, so you can really mount it straight to your, and it, it's a smaller light, and the laser is actually integrated into the reflector. And uh, it's a green laser, fantastic light. And uh, it's really bright. I think it's like a 1,000 lumens, so which is more than any other weapons light on the industry, in the industry. The, their, their lights are the highest lumens, so uh, and it's reasonable. So check out the Baldor Mini, or you can go with a little bit larger light, like the Baldor Pro, which has a laser light combo. But it's it's a bigger bigger option. So um, big fan, and I do have Viridian. <clears throat> Viridian makes some really good light laser combinations. Mm -hmm. Very, I mean, their lasers are probably the best lasers out there. Uh, so I'm a big fan of Viridian as well. So uh, those are my two top picks. Um, Adh asks. Hey, Such, is the Savage A22 FVSR a good purchase? Will they work with 22 long rifle subsonics? It's a great rifle. It, it is a great rifle. I have one. Um, Robbie's going to look it up to see if it'll take subsonics. I don't know. Uh, you know how it is. A lot of times with semi-automatics, uh, you can have some, you know, some reliability issues. But, um yeah, the, the, the A20, I mean, those, the Savage rifle line is excellent. And uh, I have a number of Savage rifles all the way up from 17 HMR, 22 Magnum, 22, and uh, they're just great. He's going to look it up and we're going to see if we can figure it out. Okay. Uh, biscuits and Gravy ask, okay, Stu. <laughs> I love that name. Where did you get that shirt? Oh, this is uh, from uh, Affliction, <laughs> Affliction shirts, and they do some really cool second pro Second Amendment shirts. Um, they just send me some. <laughs> They'll say, hey, we'll send you some shirts. And I'm like, great. And so they send them. So, yeah, affliction. Uh, Mr. Sobo Soto Banco asks, why aren't manufacturers picking up the slack? They should have learned during the Obama tyranny. Well, since I'm around my mouth, I'll let you. Yeah, so, you know, with, the, with these ammunition manufacturers, firearms manufacturers, they, they project out. A year to 18 months in advance what their what their build what their build out is going to be for for the following year so like for 2020 their projected ammunition overall ammunition manufacturing capacity was was decided in 2019 based off of trends and stuff that they've seen in the past and uh yeah i think the majority of the companies just they just missed it this year, you know. Well, how with, could they not? Right, with with COVID and then the election and all the civil unrest, you know, these these are all unpredictable things other than the election, and uh, I think all of those things co were compounding factors that that caused ammunition to just dry up immediately. And these companies, they don't, they didn't project to build uh, and assemble the raw materials for the ammunition. So you've got chemists that that mix all of the components for the primer. You've got chemists that mix all the components for the different powders and, and all of that takes time and they, they can only mix so much at a time. And when they don't project that out, then they don't have the staff on hand to be able to run the production. They don't have the chemist on hand to be able to mix the, the, the raw materials to be able to make the components. Well, the brass, and, <clears> even <throat> the brass, extruding the brass, absolutely. mining the brass. Absolutely. Yep. So, you know, it's all, it's a, uh, it's compounding factors that, that start from the raw materials all the way up through the finished product. That, that have to be produced to be able to produce ammunition. And for, you know, once again, kind of like in, in years past, it, is this a long-term, is this a long-term issue or is this a short-term bubble? If it's a short-term bubble, these companies, they don't want to hire a thousand new employees to produce ammunition where six months later, they're going to have to lay all of those people off. Right. <clears throat> Plus so the they, equipment. Right. I mean, right. you've got to have this high-tech equipment. Now, one thing that Remington did was they, and this is when they were still in business, yeah. they upped their production 200%. They brought on, you know, shifts. They, mm -hmm. I guess they hired temps. They did whatever, which is kind of scary, yeah. you know, in a, on one end. But they were running as much ammunition as they could possibly run. But again, 
they didn't have, you know, the, uh, the, the machinery to add up to yeah. it. And so the thing is, is once this dies down, they've got to consider, okay, sooner or later, this is either going to die down or they're going to mm -hmm. shut us down. And so what are we going to do with all this extra equipment? Right. We've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and we can't do it. So it is a real juggling game. And it's that way with all the yeah. manufacturers. And the machines, <clears throat> the machines that make the primers are the same machines that make 22 long rifle casings, 22 short casings, 22 magnum cases, all your rimfire casings. So these companies can either run primers or they can run 22 ammunition. Uh, There's a lot more profit margin in the, the primers that go in centerfire cartridges than there are in rimfire cartridges. So right. generally in a time like this, rimfire gets pushed to the side. They don't produce hardly any rimfire and they, they focus on the primers for the centerfire cartridges, which bring in more profit margin. Right. So, you know, it, it is a, it's a manufacturing thing. It just is. Yeah. Uh, Dwayne Christensen asked, was prepared for the ammo shortage. I'd rather know how to prepare for the coming civil unrest. Nobody seems to want to talk about it. Well, you know, here, and that'll lead us into our next thing. So we're going to mm -hmm. talk about this for a couple of minutes. Um, Washington Post or the Washington Examiner uh, last week put out a article where they did a poll. And I love how people want to question everything about these polls. Go to the free, we've got the article down below. You can go to it and, and look at it yourself. But they did a poll asking, and it was actually about business projections, which is funny. It's called um, uh, Back to Normal Barometer. And it's three different groups. And they do this for industry to let them know how their production runs, just like we talked about with ammo. Mm -hmm. When they put it out there, they said, do you believe that, the civil, that, that a civil war is coming? 60 Two percent. I think it's 61. 61 percent said, yes, we believe that civil war is, is on the horizon. And half liberal or left or whatever, half liberal, half conservative. I mean, it was split down the middle. Both sides believe that civil war is coming. Fifty two percent said that they are preparing, stockpiling food and different supplies and things like that. So, um, and so I did a video about it and I actually talked about these are some things you need to do. Uh, one thing that we've been big about, especially after just going through COVID-19, mm -hmm. is having food and making sure that we have water source. Uh, that is two of the major things that you need to cover, because here's the problem, guys, is a lot of farmers and a lot of farmland that wasn't destroyed up in Iowa. But a lot of those areas during the COVID-19, really the lockdown lockdown, they couldn't even get products. Yep. They, they couldn't even get the boxes to put the products in to ship them. So they were dumping product because they didn't have anything to do with it. And, and then they're having labor shortages as well. Mm -hmm. So guys, uh, you know, I've been really big about this. You need to get your food together now um, and get make sure that you're in good shape. Make sure that you have a way to get water and a way to filter that water. Uh, you can't, you may have a lake or a stream or whatever, but with cryptosporidium and giardia and all the chemicals and stuff that are in that water, you got to have a way to filter that water. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are basic things. Also guys, buy medical gear, make sure that you have things you need because first responders may not be available. Uh, and so, uh, medical gear outfitters is a great resource. That's skinny medic. He's a, they're personal friends of ours. And uh, they and actually their prices are lower than a lot of other places yep. and they do really high quality stuff. So check out them. Uh, and then, of course, ammo and definitely ammo and your firearms. Get your firearms maintained, clean them, go through it. That's one thing we were doing a couple of weeks ago when we got shut down is we were talking about the basic things you need to do for your rifle. So there everybody actually is talking about it uh, in some way and especially gun channels and survival channels. So go to my Sensible Prepper channel. I've got a lot of different videos addressing that specifically. Not, you know, are we going to civil war? I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. It's a very complicated thing. Nobody really knows, but I'm not going to be caught my pants down yep. if we do. And so <clears throat> make sure that you get yourself in good shape because here's the thing, just like with the civil war, they did I mean, the original civil war in the 1860s. There were a lot of events that happened that led up to what took place and nobody really knew what was going to happen. Nobody knew. I mean, there was a feeling that it was going to happen, but so you can't really say it, but guys, just make sure you have your basic survival needs taken care of. Uh, Misfit Sportsman that asks, Such, is there anything that can be done to the lacquered ammo to make it feed without jamming? Clean it off with thinner? Question mark. 
<coughs> yeah, you can uh, you can clean the lacquer off of the uh, off of the cases with with a little bit of thinner. Uh, 762 by 39. Generally, you don't have an issue with the lacquer coating on the cases because it's a tapered case. Right. So with it being a tapered case, it's very easy for that tapered case to break the seal in the chamber to be able to extract and inject. Um, in in different firearms like like your 556, which is a straight wall bottleneck cartridge, those tend to have a bigger issue with with the lacquer coatings um, than the tapered chamber. You get the the chamber hot in the gun. Uh, case after case goes in there, it melts off a little bit of the lacquer. It, it basically lacquers your your uh, chamber walls, and then a case goes in, it gets cool just a, just for a moment, and that lacquer will, will actually epoxy that case into the chamber, and you'll have to drive the case out with a steel rod. Now, this is lacquered case, mm -hmm. uh, and so, and but what they've done is they've gone away from a lot of that. This is one that is not lacquered. Or maybe a poly case. Yeah, maybe a poly case. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just if you buy the ammo, just you can look. They're, they're not doing as much of this, but yeah. you're right. It's the 7.62 by 3.9 and an AK. There's no problem. It's made to shoot that. Yep. Uh, Batman asks. Hey, Batman. Does the guide rods need to be changed on the Glock 17 Gen 3 to steel rods, or are the plastic ones that comes with it good? What's a good replacement? So we recommend replacing all of the plastic guide rods in your gun um, on the Gen 3 or the Gen 4 and 5, uh, just, just for reliability purposes. The stainless steel one-piece guide rods that, you know, it's a whole captured unit. It's super easy to install. Um, it adds a little bit of weight up front. The recoil spring is, is tuned to the, uh, to the gun itself. Um, and we sell those at wheatonarms.com. So you can you can bounce over there and grab them in a multitude of different colors right off of uh, right off of our site. But we highly recommend replacing the uh, the plastic guide rods or the stamped steel uh, Gen Four and Five guide rods with a stainless steel one for reliability. Yeah, because that that action is just yeah. yeah. Michael Hayes asks, how much cheaper actually is reloading? Uh, so it, so it depends if you've already if you already have cases. Um, cases are, are a big part of the expense. So if you already have cases, uh, you're looking at, there's two ways you can look at it. You can load cheap ammo, like uh, lead projectiles or polymer coated projectiles. Um, and, and you're generally going to save about 60% over what, uh, maybe 70% over what commercial ammo costs. Um, or you can load uh, match grade, match quality ammo so like, you know, Sierras or Burgers or something like that for your rifle, you know, your, your higher end projectiles uh, for about the cost of plinking ammo. So what you would pay for for some of your your cheap surplus 5.56 or 308, 762 by 51 ammo, you can load match grade ammo for about the cost of that. The big thing is, is the cost of the brass <clears throat> yep. in your store bought ammo, you're able to recycle it. That's right. And that that's really just a kind of a simple way, but that's true. Bottom. Did you ever find out about the the uh, subsonics in the Savage? Yeah, it, the subsonics in the uh, in the Savage A22, they they may or may not work in it. Um, it would be one of those that I think it's really going to be dependent on the brand of subsonic ammo right. and the and the pressures that you get with the the individual powder. Uh, CCI subsonics will probably run in it. Uh, some of the other subsonics may or may not. So it's going to be one of those that you're, you know, if you've got some, Test just throw some out. in it and give it a try and see if it'll work. Yeah. Um, Benito A.N.G. Um, ask, hi from Cancun, Sarah Such and awesome. Robbie. Awesome. I own a Glock 25 and a Glock 28 and 380 ACP, both Gen 3. My question is, do you have any info about Glock launching these models in Gen 4? Thank you in advance. Well, unfortunately, we don't really have access to 380 Glocks of that size. Yeah. Uh, the only one that we have, you know, is the Glock 42. Correct. Um, so, um, no, I, I don't know. Don't know. We, got we, we just don't know. Yeah. Uh, I know. I know in Mexico, you definitely, you know, there's you can't own a nine millimeter. I think it's because it's a military round. And um, but yeah, I, I don't know. We can't. Glock is so funny already about what they do and what they're listing. Yeah, but, and uh, those are models that they don't import into the United States at all. Right. The 25 and the 28, they don't import those nor make them in this country. Uh, so that's really not one that we 
that we follow or, or keep track of or have a whole lot of information about as far as upcoming uh, products or, or uh, you know, improvements that, that they're making on that particular model. Um, Damien Grigida asks, will you be reviewing the FN509 Compact MRD, thinking of buy it, buying it for EDC rotation? Uh, that's an excellent handgun. I have done the 509 Compact, uh, which is pretty much, it's really almost the same handgun. Um, a good friend of mine just bought one. Uh, he's a law enforcement uh, up not far from here, and he loves it. The Compact MRD, that's the one that accepts the red dots. Oh, yeah, but see, I've yeah. got the, the standard compact. And it'll also accept right. the red dots. It's There's something, there's a little bit of a difference, but okay. it's pretty much the same pistol. The 509 is excellent. I'll just yep. put it that way. And I really love the grip texture on it, but uh, I would highly recommend it. I think it's a great firearm. And everybody I know that's had them, they love them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Scott uh, Hatchney asks, my buddy is a new gun owner and picked up a Mossberg Tactical 3030. What's around for it for, I'm assuming, home defense HD? Yep. Uh, Hornady Lever Revolution is a, a great, great round for uh, for kind of a dual purpose. You can hunt with it. It's great for home protection. Uh, you get great expansion in thin-skinned animals, which includes like whitetail or people. Um, but it, it's, a, <laughs> it's a tremendous, tremendous round. But it's a Hornady Lever Revolution. And I think you can get it in 150 grain or 170 grain. So that would be the one that I would look at. Okay, I want to take a quick break. We're going to go right to questions. But I just want to, again, since we've been talking about ammo, it made me think about it. But today's sponsor is MTM Case Guard and their new labels for your ammo cans. And these are a poly-coated, uh, weather-resistant. I mean, they and they the stickability is incredible. And you can label your cans. You can label whatever you got in your storage. You can even label your Eye and Ear Pro, if you have that in something, your cleaning supplies and your magazines. And there's 41 different labels. Uh, they originally started out with just your basic calibers, and then they just loaded down with everything you can freaking imagine. <laughs> I mean, everything. They've got so many different labels. And you can go to ammostorage.com. Ammoboxes.com. Oh, God, I keep saying ammo storage. It's in uh, the description. It's in the description, so if I'm saying it wrong, just go there. But uh, there's a link down there. But it's ammoboxes.com. They do free shipping, and it's really the only place you can get all the different labels. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's $4.99 for eight labels, and then you can get different ones, whatever you want to do. So I just think that's cool. I mean, really, it just updates. It makes it look nice. It's easy to see. And in these little mini storage things from MTM as well, this is just great. So well, it's a, not, a lot nicer visual reference than the Sharpie, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it is, you know, and I mean, I've used Sharpies, I've oh, yeah. used tape, I've used whatever, mm -hmm. but, uh, you, you know, when you look across there at all that, yeah. you know, because I have all my ammo boxes, you know, mm -hmm. I've got all that, it's difficult to see, so, um, and, you know, we were just talking about it, when you have 9, 380, and 40, it's, you got to kind of take a second glance to look at that, and uh, you don't want to put 380 in your 9 millimeter, no, all right. Um, Royce Sargent asks, Such, I built myself an AR lower, but built several uppers in 300 blackout 556 and also conversion bolt and magazines is there another caliber i can build an upper for to make it easy on ammo purchases uh you know what i've been seeing a lot of lately what is 224 valkyrie yeah yeah oh, i have, I have been seeing a ton i have my, two. my distributors have it in stock i've been seeing it in stores on the shelves 224 valkyrie is one that is pretty readily available right now in the uh, set, especially the 75 grain projectile, right? Which I actually prefer over the 90s. I think the 75s and the one in eight twist barrels and the one in seven twist barrels stabilize a little bit better. But uh, I've been seeing a ton of 224 Valkyrie out there. Yeah, I mean, and, and reasonable prices. You know, you have no huge spike in the price on it. It's still running about the same price. About uh, what are they like, 10 or 15 dollars a box for 20 rounds. So, uh, and I'll tell you what's really funny. Robbie and I took the the 224 Valkyrie out to a thousand yards, no mm -hmm. problem. It'll go way past that. Uh, but it was funny when we first did it and they kind of tuned these in a little bit yeah. better. But uh, when we first did it, we had about a three inch group at a hundred yards or so. And we were kind of like, this is going to be a long yeah. day because <laughs> we were going out to a thousand. <laughs> we started going out and it just went. Yeah. I mean, that is a super accurate, low recoil caliber. Mm -hmm. So 224 Valkyrie, definitely. I think that's a great caliber. And again, if it's available, 
And um, that's right. And reasonably priced right. compared to a lot of other stuff. That could out be there. that could be one of that could be the the uh, the golden unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Desert Patriot asks, "What are your thoughts about the Grail water filter?" Uh, I did a review on the Grail. In fact, my video says, uh, "In fact, when I started it out, do you seek the Grail?" <laughs> it's it's a great water system. Uh, you know, it's really easy to use. You just take, you fill it up with the water. You take the filter, which is a piece, a sleeve, and you just push it down, and it locks in, and it's good to go. Uh, I have the, I think one of the, there's a new one that's actually the light. I think it is. It's actually, from what I understand, a little bit better, but uh, really just the, the uh, I, I don't even want to say plastic, but it's more like a polymer feel to it. So mm -hmm. it feels really secure. Yep. And um, yeah, I, big time. Love them. Love them. And uh, they're, on my Sensible Prepper channel, I do have a review of it. Uh, I think I do. If it not, it may have gone to Survival Dispatch first. I think I think it is on my sensible prepper channel. We work we work with Survival Dispatch, and I'll I'll upload videos there first uh, because those guys are just awesome. But yes, ma'am. Uh, Bob McAllister asks, "Hey guys, what's your favorite ankle holster?" The Desantis Apache. <laughs> I'll have to leave that one up to you. I'm I'm a long way from the ground when I stand up. <laughs> And I, I do not tend to carry on my ankle. So. Well, and it's according to how you want to carry or what you want to carry. But what years ago, I was looking for something. I don't carry an uh, ankle often, mm -hmm. uh, but I do go through stages where I do carry it. And one of the things I love about that is, is I'm just, I feel like I'm not carrying, I don't have anything on my waist and I need to be very discreet. I might be dressed really nice. And, you know, so uh, the DeSantis Apache is kind of like one of those stretchy, Think, but it has this faux sheepskin little backing. So when it fits on your leg, it is so comfortable. Uh, I carried the um, the Ruger LCP and the Ruger LCP2. I would carry it there. And then there was another, I think I've got one for the G43. But here, this is the funny thing. Uh, we were, we've been to the range. We were going to go in and eat. And uh, I'd, it had gotten warm that afternoon. So I just had on this little thin t-shirt. You could see my concealed carry. And so I was with Dietrich from Skinny Medic, and uh, I said, you've got your concealed carry. I said, I just can't do it. I can't get away with it. I mean, there was just no way. And we went in, ate lunch, came back out, and when I put my foot up on the running board of my truck, I went, wait a minute. I've got that thing on my ankle. I had it on there the whole time. It was so comfortable. So, um, you know, it's not very expensive either. I think mm -hmm. they're fairly reasonable, but that's just been my experience. I haven't done a lot with ankle holsters, but that's what I have. Uh, Jay Howell asks, is there any discernible ballistic advantage with a threaded barrel over a non-threaded barrel? Uh, maybe 15 foot per second velocity. And, and that's a maybe. That's going to be about the only difference you're going to see is just a slight, slight increase in velocity uh, due to the, the slightly extended barrel length. Other than that, no, no difference in accuracy, <clears throat> performance, uh, terminal ballistics or anything like that. Just a very, very slight increase in velocity. Um, Zero asks, what do you recommend if you encounter an anti-2A Democrat? I recommend, well, I'm on Facebook Live. I mean, YouTube Live, aren't hugs. I? Hugs. Lots, really of, lots hugs. of hugs. Lots of hugs. Um, well, you know, we just saw where that pro-Trump rally was going on. And mm -hmm. the security guard, who was a Trump hater and huge anti-gun, in fact, he was an anarchist shot him in the, shot him in the head mm -hmm. in front um, of his son you know, it was a terrible situation so i you know what do you you know i don't you've got to measure that and make the judgment where you are one of the things that i've said about surviving a civil unrest environment is you've got to have good communication skills that means that you can communicate and diffuse a situation if possible um you know it, it's really easy. Here's the thing, guys. If I'm carrying concealed, and I've told my family this because all my family all concealed carries, my kids. And uh, I said, here's the thing. Even in a road rage incident, if you're driving down the road and somebody cuts you off and you go up and get up on their bumper and you blow the horn or you pass them and you shoot them a bird or whatever, and you're concealed carrying, mm -hmm. and then they follow you and you get out and you get into a big altercation, once you escalated that situation, you can be charged with murder. You have actually uh, taken away your right to defend yourself with that firearm. That's right. 
I want you to think about that, guys, because when you get pissed off going down the road and somebody does something to you, take the high road. If you're in a situation in a, in a riot situation or what, not a riot, but a protest and all that, take the high road if possible. Once you've taken the high road, it's just like there was one guy, I think it was down in Tallahassee. They had a, a, he was just there with his phone, just kind of documenting what was going on. And these people got a hold of him and started fighting him. He was staying, he was like, hey, hey, hey. And they started, this one guy punched him and they started punching him. He pulled out his firearm and he shot him. No, he didn't shoot him. He actually just pulled it out, got him away from him. And they all backed up and they said, police, police, which defund the police. Get him. Mm -hmm. The police came and arrested him. Or it took him in and then they released him because he had a concealed carry permit. He was defending his own life. It was no big deal. So take the high road all the way up until you have to draw your firearm because you're in fear for your life. But to, to fight against them hand on hand, you got to make sure because you got to think about it. You're going to be in a court of law and you've got to prove that you were justified in doing whatever action you had to take. So that that's just my. But again. <laughs> There's a lot of variation there. Uh, James Leach asked, looking to buy a CV75 compact steel frame with safety. Your thoughts as a CCW? Great pistol. No, they they're, love <clears throat> they're just a little bit heavy. It would be That would be the only negative that I would say to that pistol is just the uh, the weight of it. It's a little bit heavy to carry on your belt every day, uh, whether, whether it's IWB uh, or OWB. <clears throat> but uh, that's the only real negative. It's it's a great soft shooting, very flat, uh, controllable pistol. I've, I've got one tons of tons of positive uh, accolades for that pistol. Um, you know, the weight, the weight is the only issue. I've got one of the PCRs, <clears throat> which mm -hmm. is their compact, and I have the Rammy. Yeah. Oh, I love that pistol. I love the way it shoots. This is the thing, guys. A lot of people get just anal and freaked out about weight, which I agree. Yeah. You got to wait. You got to carry it. But a lot of guys don't care yeah they're like you know what i like the way well, it's a little bit comforting i carried a 1911 a full-size 1911 yeah. for 15 years yeah you know was my was my everyday carry pistol and you know that's you're looking at 60 ounces or so with a loaded magazine in it so you know obviously weight doesn't bother me a whole lot on my belt. Right. but it um, is it is something to consider though it, it is. is something to yep. consider uh terrell white ask i have a wife and four children bug in or bug out bug in 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 now this is the thing. Uh, now, if you're in a bad area, let's say you're in you're in some kind of urban area. OK, you, you need to before things start to escalate, you need to have a place to go, preferably family that you get along with. That's right. Or, or really close friends, some people that you really can connect with. Because here's the thing. When you're bugging out, you are a glorified refugee. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when you're on the freeway thinking you're going to bug out somewhere, they can shut the freeways that's down. Right. And we've seen it over and over. And that's the thing. If you're if you're going to bug out, you don't wait until you have to bug out to leave. You know, you you project out. You look at things and you're like, I see things escalating here. I think my family needs to go ahead and leave now before it gets bad. All right. You make that decision early so you're able to get out and get away from a certain area and, and go somewhere where you, you and your family are going to be safe before things escalate to the point that you can't get out or you have to fight for your life to try and get out. Now, one thing that uh, for foul in the uh, modern survival guide for the coming economic collapse, it was about the I talk about this book all the time. Mm -hmm. It was down in Argentina when they had their collapse. One of the things he said was the people that bugged out, the gangs followed them. And he said they were able to take them out and steal all their stuff, rape their women, do what, kill them, whatever, without any kind of consequences. The people that stayed together and bound, bond together and created a security, which is what you need to be doing. Mm -hmm. You need to be knowing your neighbors and, and see, I don't, I don't really know your situation. If you're like in an urban neighborhood or suburban neighborhood, or if you're in an urban area or if you're on the country, but to me, people are going to be an asset. So you need to make sure that you create a, a community, of people that you can count on. That is your number one thing. Uh, you know, just thinking about you with four kids and your wife and how you've got to be concerned that, yeah. I mean, that, 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 uh, you know, that, that really bothers me that you have to feel that way. And, uh, but that's just like, you know, if you have to look at where you are and what's, what's your, what the potential is, mm -hmm. but there's one saying this in the prepper world, it's better to be, uh, it's better to be early and wrong than late and right. 
And that means that if you really feel like you need to get out, don't wait till it's the last minute mm -hmm. because you may be wrong in leaving a little early, but at least you saved yourself and your family. So, but again, it's according to where you are, but you need to get to know the people around you, your neighbors, and they can count on you. You can count on them and it makes for a stronger system. I mean, it's a stronger way. That's the one thing we do. We have a, a prepper community that we work together. We meet on Sunday nights. We have a large group of people and we bounce ideas and encourage each other and what's, what we need to be doing. But if I need somebody, I mean, Robbie and I are just good friends. So if he needs me, I'm there, but you build a community of That's people right. that can help. you. So that is my thing. And I just, I wish I knew more information about what you're doing, but, um, that's pretty much sums it up, but don't, don't bug out if you, unless you just feel like you got to get out. Okay. We've got about five minutes. And so, um, and we didn't really get into, we didn't, which let's just lead us into the next couple of minutes. Yep, let's yep. talk about having <clears throat> your stuff together. Do you have your stuff together? Uh, you know, here's the thing, guys, your, your firearms, whatever they are, uh, clean them, maintain them, check them out. If you need to replace something on it, if you have some kind of maintenance issue, mm -hmm. you know, uh, one thing we talked about last week with the AR-15, take your bolt out, put it bolt down on a table and see if it goes clunk or if it stays up. If it clunks, you need to replace those gas rings. Yep. There are things like that you need to do. Uh, make sure that your ammo, you know where it is. It's organized. Uh, you're ready to go. I mean, these little cases like this, these are awesome because they separate my ammo. I can label it, you know, and not just because I'm doing this for this, because we will talk about it a little bit, but having your ammo stored away, having your supplies, Listen, I'm not I'm not one to recommend you bug out, but it needs to be part of your plan. Mm -hmm. So have your bag ready. One thing we've been big about, one thing our group's been big about is having your get home bag, not a bug out bag, your get home bag where you have the essentials in your vehicle at all times. And you have those survival essentials, your roadmaps, your extra batteries, flashlights, your things that you need, water filter your poncho for rain, mm -hmm. have that in there in case you find yourself in a situation where you need to, to you need them. And that can happen at any time. That's right. Uh, but, you know, your food, make sure that you have your food together and make sure that you have your stuff in a certain place. One thing that I've had to do over the past few years, because I do reviews and I'm doing stuff here, I'm doing stuff there. And, I, you know, my stuff gets moved around. Mm -hmm. And so I've had to really fine tune my plate carriers. They go here my, you know, my night vision here, my rifles that I'm, you know, my ammunition, I need my food, my water, um, putting all that stuff together, you know, having a, a certain location. That's right. So, you know, it's really important to stage. In fact, I'm going to be doing a video specifically about it. I've got one last thing to do to finish up. And uh, it's about having your stuff together, having it where you can know where it is. It's not, well, it's up there in the attic somewhere or it's in, out in the garage and it's behind some something and you don't even know where it is. Know where your stuff is and have it ready to go. And it all depends on where you live and how much space you have right. and all that. <clears throat> but, um, you know, that is to me. Now is the time, guys. We have three weeks, three weeks from today. This is Tuesday. We have three weeks before the election. And they've already the other side has already been talking about ramping it up now. One thing I do want to say, guys, you know, we do have the coming election. There's it, it's funny, but there's a lot of people that are that don't like either one, which I understand don't like either candidate. And some people, though, are trying to decide, you know, well, which one do I want? I mean, I like his personality better than his. Uh, I like his decorum a little better. I like his uh, he seems to be more gentle, blah, blah, blah. This is not a high school student body popularity, popularity contest. freaking contest okay this is what you need to vote for <clears throat> number one vote for america vote for the second amendment vote for freedom vote for supporting our law enforcement vote for our veterans and our military vote for capitalism and free trade and free expression of ideas freedom of speech Freedom of religion. And guys, that's coming. That's mm -hmm. coming. Freedom of religion. What your kids, freedom of education, 
being able to homeschool your kids if you want to. That's we've done that. We we homeschooled all three of our kids. Vote for what's going to protect the core values that you believe in, not some personality. Vote for that. That is what's going to make the difference. And not only on the presidential side. And guys, if you're just not voting because you're disgusted for whatever reason mm. with the choice, because we don't have another choice. This is it. It's one or the other. Yep. It's, it's just one or the other. You can make up your mind. Vote for what's going to make America, honestly, a better place. Not let's tear it down and transform it. What's going to make America a better place? And it's the Senate. It's the you know, right now we have Jamie Harrison. Man, he looks like the nicest guy. He's a Democrat. He was a big lobbyist in D.C. He Pelosi loves him. Schumer loves him. He, Hillary Clinton loves him. Hillary Clinton loves him. He said that Nancy Pelosi was his mentor. OK, but he man on TV, I'm watching him. I'm thinking that guy is just a nice guy. And, oh, my grandpa. And I'm in church and I'm this. that. that. And you got Lindsey Graham who I have not always been the happiest with on all things, but he is huge on the Second Amendment, huge to stand up for the Second Amendment. I got to decide, do I just really like Jamie Harrison because he just looks like a nice guy? Or am I going to vote for someone that's going to stand for the freedoms, stand for our military, stand constitutional for rights, constitutional rights? I mean, what am I going to do here? <clears throat> is this, am I in high school? Mm. I, just think about it. I'm not saying which one. You just decide who to vote for on based on that, not on because I don't like that. I'm not going to vote for that. Just think about it because it's important. We're, we're down to three weeks. All right. With that said, that was the only rant. And uh, what I do want to talk before we leave, because it's time to go. Uh, I just really appreciate MTM Case Guard for sending these labels. Guys, these things are super cool. They're $4.99. Ammoboxes.com. We'll have a link down below in the description. They give free shipping. It's $4.99 for eight. But you can really get your ammo stored away and get it rocked out. And we just really appreciate those guys. They sent them to us and said, hey, we want to get this out there. We want to sponsor today's episodes. There is 41 different calibers. It's phenomenal. I mean, if you've got the caliber, they've got it. <laughs> Unless you got something really weird. But um, it's really just a lot of cool things. So and then, too, just the, all their ammo crates and all the different things. I, I love MTM. Great using solutions. Them. We Great take solutions. their their high low table to mm. every range trip. Yep. And uh, it is phenomenal shooting bench. So just really, again, we appreciate MTM Case Guard for, for their sponsorship. Also. Robbie from Wheaton Arms, always great to have him. And uh, he just comes and we hang out. Of course, he and I are good friends, been friends for a long time. But just a great asset, hopefully for you guys, a lot of information. And he's seen it all and he's been through it all, you know, what, what we uh, haven't been through together. <laughs> but um, WheatonArms.com, great aftermarket Glock parts. If you've got a Glock 40 and you want a nine millimeter barrel, and he sells them as fast as they get in stock, but he can get you that and a lot of other things. So, uh, and then does custom gun work as well. So we really appreciate Robbie. He is just a great asset. And uh, plus he, you know, we have a lot of laughs that way. It's a great time every week here. Yeah, we love it. And then Sarah Mac over on the computer doing um, monitoring questions and keeping us in line. It's just <laughs> awesome. So guys, we really appreciate you hanging out with us today. And again, if you're not registered, Guys, please, we got to get voting. Vote for freedom. You know what they say? Vote early and vote often. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, anyway, and so again, guys, really appreciate you coming by and seeing us. And um, we'll see you the next time. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the republic.